<coughs> quality of the uh, university sports band continued to decline so bad that at one point they could not tell the national anthem at a hockey game. <laughs> and at that point, they banned the university sports band from all events. And the university sports band started playing where? Guess. Guess where they went to play? St. Ben's, St. John's. I'm not making this up. They started playing for St. Ben's football games because they were not allowed into St. Cloud State games, which I think is hilarious. Um, yeah, that happened. In the meantime, Dr. Hansen built up the wind ensemble and the bands program. He's been published. Uh, big history of the wind ensemble. Uh, he is also, there's his publication that's international. Uh, in 07, he took the St. Cloud State Wind Ensemble to the American Bandmasters Association Convention, which is a huge performance convention in California. Huge deal. He has been very busy. He just retired recently. Just retired. He's living down in the cities now. Um, I was hired in 05, and they said, start up a sports band, we'll give you a year. And then they came back a few months later and said, ah, we're kidding, you need to do it now. And uh, well, that is, does anybody remember uh, Dr. Roy Seigo? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 okay. That's Roy Seigo. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, yeah, because I was told a day before the first performance, oh, Roy's going to uh, direct the band. And I said, well, whoa, 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 no. And they were like, yeah, he's going to. Yeah, so you just make it happen. So I just told the band, just don't look at him. Just... <laughs> <laughs> they were fine. <laughs> it's gone through name changes, whether it's University Sports Band or Husky Sports Band. Uh, my second day on campus, I was told, we're going to visit the president. So, you know, wear shoes. Uh, they are. And we go over to the AS building, and we go up into the president's office. It's beautiful, you know. And there's Roy Saigo, and he's like, hey, great to meet you. And at that point, we had no idea what the program was going to be called. And uh, President Saigo said, how's my Husky sports band doing? And I said, it's doing fine, sir. Doing fine. And that's where the name came from. It's a silly name. But you gotta, you gotta blame him for it. He's been terrific. He's been terrific. He is retired, and then he went out to uh, Oregon, South Oregon State University, and he was an intern there for two years, and he actually started another band out there. So he's got a habit of doing this. <coughs> oh, come on, you've been doing great so far. There we go. So, 07, you will notice there, well, if you look closely, there are a few non-students in the band. We took anybody when we started. If you can breathe, we'll take you. Come on in. <coughs> because we had to have numbers. We had to. Uh, we started a color guard after that. Uh, 2011, we played for an NCAA football playoff game. The best national anthem the Husky sports band has ever played. It was in the snow. And we ran out of the tunnel, played it, and then ran back in and went home. But it was a great national anthem. Also, some uniform changes. 1940, 55, 68, 83. Of course, that was University Sports Band. At first, we had t-shirts and polos. And I go through, and I actually find the theater department had one of the old 1950s. Look at that. Isn't that great? TC. <coughs> Technical College. These are actually kind of nice. They had one of these in storage for costumes. So I got a few photos. I let the, Carol let me borrow it today. I have to return it at the end of the day. But um, these, this is what the band wore. The interesting thing is I wanted to try and build the Husky Sports Band into you know, something more formal, something nicer looking, right? Do you like these? Say yes. Yes. Oh, so do I. Thank you. Um, what happened was uh, we didn't have the money to buy uniforms. You want to guess how much a whole set of uh, wool uniforms cost? About six figures. About six figures, all right? So the university is not going to pay for that. The university is not going to pay for that. Good luck with that, all right? Uh, the money just isn't there. It's not like we're in Beverly Hills. So, um... I find out that there is a high school 
throwing out their entire set of marching man uniforms. All right, and I talk to them, and they're like, you want them? What color are they? <coughs> Red and black. Wow. And they said, you pay for our dry cleaning, we'll give them to you for free. Oh so, so $400 later, in a truck, we pick them all up, we come back. These are the uniform coats from, are you ready? You see the C? You see the R? Coon Rapids High School. Now, we got them, and uh, some other staff and faculty were like, what are you, an idiot? We're not going to do that. Coon Rapids, you're not going to wear those. So yeah, we are. So we took the sash, and the sash used to go across here, right to left, and we turned it into a drop, and we moved the cape. Students love capes, I don't know why, but we moved the cape to <coughs> there, added this, and voila. And the plastic piece there is just plastic cut in California by a laser cutter. Guess where the sticker came from? The helmets! The football helmets! They order them by the thousand! So I said, can I have a hundred? Yeah, whatever, <coughs> get over here. So these are the stickers from the helmets, but when you put them on, nobody can tell. So don't tell, no, you can tell anyone you want. But that was an interesting thing starting up the Husky Sports Band, is the fact that we actually have uniforms. Does it change the way the band plays? Yes. I didn't think it would, but it did. <coughs> it actually did. The moment they put these things on, they're like, oh, now I'm a... Now I'm real. Now I'm official. You know? <coughs> I'm good. It doesn't make sense, but they play better. And uh, they look great. Very expensive. Very expensive. No matter what anybody tells you, very expensive uniforms. Very expensive. Yeah, there, there we are. One of our first concerts. We've got, they even gave us their plumes. Those little furry things on Yeah, we've got those. So those are great. Yeah. We got lucky. <coughs> Uh, we keep building every year, we keep trying every year. We've got a few traditions that I'll share with you. I really like traditions because traditions add havoc to life. At the end of every rehearsal, I'll try this with uh, Miss Fitting, a uh, uh, former student of mine over here. All right, I'll say it and you know what to say. At the end of every rehearsal, every performance, I always say, thank you for learning. Thank you for teaching. And that's how you know it's over. <laughs> if I don't say that, I'm still going to yell at you. You're still going to play. The moment I say that, they're gone. Yeah. Uh, basketball palindrome. At basketball games, when the score, you know what a palindrome is, the same forwards as backwards, right? The numbers. I don't know why, but like my second, third year, it was really boring, the game. And it got into a palindrome. It was like 51 to 15. Palindrome. So I started yelling, palindrome, pal. And the whole band was so bored, they're like, that's hilarious. So every game, when the score creates a palindrome, the whole band starts screaming palindrome until it changes. And usually we get a look from the other coach, like, what are they yelling? I mean, is that inappropriate? No, it's just dumb. <laughs> we celebrate our birthday every March 1st. I have cake. I bring in cake. We celebrate our birthday. We have veteran dog tags. If you're a veteran in the band, you get a dog tag. And a lot of the students actually wear them. We have a cone of awesome. <laughs> it's just a cone that we paint. And then you can give it to other sections as a gift to say you're doing awesome. Uh, we assign the places we rehearse. We don't call them, please meet outside of Ritchie Auditorium for our rehearsal. We say go to the concrete jungle. Right over there. Drum line, please go to Area 51. Uh, color guard, please go to Sherwood Forest, which is the grassy area in front of the AS building. But it's easier to do that. Honorary band members, every year we elect an honorary band member. The students choose the honorary band member. I don't. Why? Because it's their band. So they choose. We've had a football player as honorary band member. Because there was one football player a few years ago before uh, pregame, the football player would come by to the band and go, hey, thank you. It's great to have you here. I thank you. 
And he was, he was a very handsome fellow, too. So, yeah, he became an honorary <coughs> band member. Uh, do you want to know who this year's honorary band member is? Say yes. 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 <laughs> Tom, the general maintenance worker at the Performing Arts Center. <laughs> yes, Tom has been there forever. And he's retiring. And no one cleans bathrooms better than Tom. <laughs> I have never seen a speck of dirt in any bathroom in my life while he's been there. And he always takes out my trash every day. And he's retiring, and I'm going to miss him. So, yep, I told the students, and they're like, oh, Tom's awesome. I'm like, well, make him an honorary band member. What do you get when you're an honorary band member? Nothing. <laughs> <coughs> We, we send out a press release. That's about it. You, you get like a thank you, and that's, that's pretty much all you get. And our 10th anniversary. Our 10th anniversary was in 2016. And on your way out, over on your left, uh, please, on your way out when you're done today, help us celebrate our 10th anniversary. We've got a copy of our newsletter. We've got stickers. We've got postcards that you can actually mail. And most importantly, we minted a 10th anniversary commemorative coin. Ooh. By the way, <coughs> none of your tax dollars went to do this. The students fundraised for this, and it's aluminum. <laughs> All right? So it's not expensive. But the students and the parents think they are awesome. And I brought enough for everybody, so... In like a hundred years, they'll be worth a dollar. <laughs> and if you come to the football game this coming Saturday, there's a football game at 1 o'clock at Husky Stadium, they are going to use this coin for the coin flip. Oh. Oh. <clears throat> I know. It took that many months to get the NCAA to approve it. <laughs> uh, but our drum major is going to come out and, and say, what, what would you like to call it? Band? <laughs> or St. Cloud State, or you know, we, we don't know yet. But it's going to be used for a coin flip at the football game, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. But yeah, take one of these on the way out. Come on, my mom's got one, all my neighbors have one. <laughs> They're great. They're great. Um, <laughs> band program's gone through a lot of changes. Now the director of bands is Dr. Catherine Bushman. Uh, she came here from down south. She's in the process of taking the wind ensemble. They're on tour right now to some local schools and going out to Omaha, and next semester she's taking the Wind Ensemble to New York City, so they're gonna be doing that. Big thank you to all these impressive people. Yeah, look at that, that's a huge list of thank you. Some of you are on that list and you know who you are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's too many, and, there, and that doesn't even include all the people that I interviewed. So, geez, uh, there is a band clinic coming up on February 18th for high school students. If you know a high school student, bring them along. We'd love to have them play. We have an alumni band coming up on the 28th. Oh my gosh, free admission and free pizza. Ooh. And if you have questions, please take, a, please take a business card on the way out. If you would like to become famous, I would love to interview you. If you've been in the St. Cloud State Band, if your neighbor, pet, relative, anything was involved in the St. Cloud State Band, I would love to interview them and have an oral interview because the more data you get, the easier it is. Am I writing a book? <coughs> Say yes. 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 I am writing a book. Is it my number one priority in life? No, because I need to pay a mortgage. So, uh, but I am in a process of writing a book. After it's published, I will become famous. I will become famous, and I will be so rich that I won't have time to come to the Stern History Museum. But until then, but I am writing a book on this, uh, and. I'm going to include a lot more other stories, hopefully, and some other funny stories. Uh, do you want to hear one more story before I end on time? Say yes. 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 All right. My story, my story that I'm putting, I have a bunch, but one of mine that I'm putting in, my fifth year at St. Cloud State, I went out to lunch to uh, New York Euro, right off campus there, and I parked, and I went and got my Euro and got back in my car, and I pulled out, and I tapped the bumper of a car behind me, and I mean tacked, tacked. And I was like, oh, I better get out, I better get out, better get out. So I got out of my car and I looked and it's this black sedan with black tinted glass. <coughs> and out of it steps 
this huge man wearing tight spandex and muscles. Huge man. And, and I looked at him and said, I'm really sorry, sir. And he starts walking at me. What do you do to my car? And I'm like, oh, no, please don't kill me. <laughs> and he is angry. And he's looking at the bumper and he says, you and I have a disturbance. We have a problem to resolve. And I'm like, can we exchange insurance? You know, I'm really sorry. And at that moment, I noticed on his shirt, it says, St. Cloud State Football. <laughs> and I suddenly look up at him and I say, oh, you're on the football team. And he goes, yeah, what's your problem? And I said, hey, I'm the band director. <laughs> <laughs> we love you guys. And I really like that last, that last game where you changed the, uh, you, you, you changed the formation on the offense, so you, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Two minutes later, I got out of there with my life. <laughs> totally fine. He was a player on the offensive line, but his arm muscles were like the size of my waist. <laughs> he was huge, and well, once he learned I was the band director, he's like, oh, we like the band. I said, what? Well, really sorry. Oh, well, it's okay. Yeah. That'll be in the book, but I'll try and make it less boring. Hey, you guys have been terrific. I want to look at my notes and make sure I haven't missed anything. I don't think I have. There's a lot of other stories. There's a lot of other information. But uh, thank you for supporting St. Cloud State University. If you want to come to a concert, we've got a concert coming up on the 29th. It's free! It's a free concert at Richie Auditorium on Tuesday the 29th at 7 p.m. It's our Sounds of the Stadium concert. And it's going to feature jazz ensemble and the Husky Sports Band, and we're going to be in uniform, and we're going to play all kinds of music from football, and we're going to announce a new drum major, because we got to, the drum majors graduate sometimes. So, <laughs> yeah, I know, they graduate. Uh, and we have seven seniors and two students that have been in the band for five years. Oh. So we're going to recognize them at the concert. That's the 29th. Help yourself to some stickers. Uh, if you want to contact me about doing an interview, I would love to talk with you about an interview. I see no question. I'm just joking because he's waving at me. Question! Can you take some questions from the audience for a couple minutes? I would love to take questions from the audience. Go! Can I come up and take a class from you? <laughs> <laughs> What else you ask? <laughs> I don't teach any classes anymore. No. Um, I am uh, half and half. I'm MUSAF. Half and half. I'm not IFO. So I am point five Department of Music Recruitment Promotions web page development. So I do all the busy work and stuff like that and go to admissions events. And I'm point five Husky Sports Man. That's it. So and I have a 12 month contract. So yeah. So no. <laughs> Any other questions besides that one? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was wondering in the 1930s, how did they support the conversion? That's a great question. That's a great question. I think a lot of the students in the 30s had their own instruments, so that was probably less of a problem. But it was still a challenge. It had to have been a challenge, right? The Depression. It had to have been a challenge. But they kept a band going. That's the amazing part. I gotta look into that more. There has to be some article about that. That's a good question. Questions are a sign of intelligence. I like that. Thank you. <laughs> no, I tell the students that all the time. Uh, I like that question. I gotta look into that connection between the depression. Because you would think that it would change the band, mm -hmm. but it didn't. It kept going. Um, we survived the depression. Amazingly. Good question. Go! When are you going to be on a Saturday Night Live? <laughs> I was going to open the presentation with a story uh, that my uh, dear mother told me recently about how when I was a little kid, real little, little snot, um, I would at the Royal Oak Public Library, I got bored in the children's section, and I would escape out of the children's section into the adult books, the history section. Ooh. And I would pull all the adult history books out, and a librarian came up to my dear mother 
and reprimanded her, saying, your son has no business being over in the history section. And my mother said, of course, of course. And then just let me keep checking out books. <laughs> that, I was going to open with that one. Uh, but yeah, I loved history all my life. I think it's awesome. If I didn't teach music, I probably would teach history or do something like that. Um, yeah, my mother got reprimanded. You know, I was still reading them. I just couldn't pronounce everything. No. Uh, next question. The questions are questions are fun, and there's more donuts. Questions. Go. Um, is this story similar to other universities as far as the the ebb and flow of bands? I mean, or is there programs that are just like really successful? You know, it's like he's thought about this one. Yeah. Good question. No. <laughs> this example is very different at many other universities, take Alabama. They started their marching band through ROTC. They started it through the university. St. Cloud State is unique because it was all student run. It was all student started in 27. Nobody wanted a band. The students wanted a band. They did it. And then the university said, oh, darn, we're going to have to have a band. And then they hired a band director. And it's also very interesting with St. Cloud State, the fact of how many times the sports band, marching band end of the program has been eliminated, destroyed, all the uniforms sold off, everything removed, and then we restart it. Uh, it's a real interesting observation in that way. I have yet to find another university that has eliminated their marching band program pep band program three times in a row. That is huge, because when you eliminate it, you get rid of all the institutional memory. It's gone. That's how we, that's how we lost the rouser. That's how we lost the fight song. That's how we lost the hymn. We don't even play the hymn at uh, graduation. We don't even do that. So you lose all that institutional memory. St. Cloud State has a habit of doing that. <laughs> that's just the way they work. Also, the number of overlaps that you saw between brothers and then sons being, I'm not going to call that inbreeding, but there's a lot more overlap in there. It wasn't until really Ronald Riggs that an outside force, well, then he was the son of G. Oliver. Really, Roger Barrett came in. So there are some similarities, but there are very many unusual avenues to the development of that band program. And uh, eventually I want to present this at the College Band Directors National Association Convention, but uh, I, I probably need to publish the book first before I do that. But yeah, eventually I'll publish there and do that and uh, become famous. <laughs> that's the most important thing is to be famous. Yeah. I else? love research. It's fun. Research is fun. And I can't say thank you enough to everyone here at this museum. Please say thank you.